thanks for that segue too about meetings. So, so can we just get a, a show of hands with an honest answer? Who has um, wasted time in a meeting of late? So normally you ask that question, and not normally, every time, um, we get a 95% show of hands in the room and also a number of giggles that go across the room. And what I always say, well, hell, you know, if we're wasting time in our meetings, meetings are actually our lowest hanging fruit because we have the right people in the room by virtue of the invita invitation. We've got the subject matter on the table and we've got um, we've got face-to-face -face communication happening where the best possible form of interaction can occur and we waste these times. So one of the reasons, one of the interventions we use to get across these difficult meetings um, is we use parallel thinking. Because what we do is when we have a meeting, we have you know, a number of people in, and everyone is different. We're not all on the same page. So we come in with different views. So we come in with a diversity of views, a diversity of thinking, a diversity of approaches. And the problem is diversity is wonderful, and it's a great way to get where you want to go, but diversity by its very nature is divisive. So we get into a meeting, and some person says it's black, and the other person says it's white, and what we do is we butt heads. So we see this playing out in all sorts of inefficient forums like judiciaries and parliaments. <coughs> it's about winning, so it's adversarial and we butt heads, we waste time and we do not get the proper subject matter exploration that we need. Parallel thinking is about taking that out of the equation. So instead of butting heads, what we do is we all get into parallel and think from the same thinking perspective at the same time. So for example, if we were going to debate a new proposal for the new Ken session, which Bill has said we're going to come to next month, this half of the room absolutely hates it. It's the stupidest idea they've ever heard. This group thinks it's, it's the best thing since sliced bread. We don't argue about it, we don't discuss it, we, we don't bother about that. What we do is we immediately get into parallel and we all look at it from a positive perspective. What's the values, what's the benefits of this? Even this group who hate the idea, we ask them to step out of their, what could be their habitual thinking style and force them to look at it in parallel with this group. We make an exhaustive list of all the positives and once we've done that, only then do we all, all of us, even those who love the idea, look at it from that critical perspective well and make an exhaustive list of all the negatives. <clears throat> You've both, each, everyone in the room has then stepped it into this particular parallel thinking phase and looked at it from the same thinking perspective at the same time and only once you've done that can you make a balanced judgement. Look at the positives, look at the negatives. Now that's just one of the ways you can parallel think. There's multiple different forms and ways of doing it. But what it does, it saves you time, it makes you more focused in your thinking and most importantly, it makes you more outcome oriented. So it's a great, uh, it's a great way of thinking, particularly when you're getting, getting a number of people together. So you can do a million and one different things with it. Lateral. <coughs> lateral thinking is something a lot of us tend to struggle with because the very lateral thinking processes themselves are disruptive <coughs> to the way we normally, normally think. Because what they ask us to do is do something really unnatural. So normally, if someone gives us a problem, what we do is, here's the problem, Let's brainstorm some ideas and come up with a solution. <coughs> it's kind of a straight line. What the lateral thinking does, it picks us up out of our normal thinking patterns and dumps us in another totally unfamiliar place altogether, and from there we have to plot our way back in. And for some, this is really uh, unsettling, but it's a great way which forces us to look at our existing issues through totally unrelated lenses, through a range of different processes, so we can see things differently. And the, and the, one of the perspectives behind it is if you can see something through a different lens from an entirely different direction, you see different elements of it. And when you see different elements of it, you can react to it differently, come up with new ideas. So the lateral thinking tools per se, there's, quite, there's a number of them. There's four primary ones, and depending on the context and the way you use it, you'll use a different tool. So there's one that prov pr provides provocative statements from which you generate new ideas. Another one, you know, there's different tools for different things. But they're a great way for breaking our existing thinking patterns because what we do is we always default to the same thinking patterns. The more we use them, the more we're likely to use them, which makes us very solution-oriented. The, 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 the solutions and the ways to navigate the problems coming at us now from the future, we need very different thinking. And one of the best ways to do that is by breaking the way we think now to allow us to see things from different perspectives. And that's what we use lateral thinking. Any Thank you. Before? Oh, no, that's great. Thank you.